Hello everyone, Richard Carlton here. Welcome to another awesome day of FileMaker training. I want to do a quick reach out to one of our broadcast engineers. Jeremy's here. Jeremy, can you make sure you change the description on Twitch for me? If you go up under on Twitch uh, and change the description, it still has Nick Hunter's description. We need to change it to today's description. For Hopefully sure. you can do that for me. So welcome everyone yeah. to another awesome day of FileMaker training. I'm Richard Carlton, creator of FMTrain.tv. Every day at 1 p.m. We do live training on the FileMaker platform every day, five days a week. That's five hours of training. Some of the topics are pretty advanced. Some of them are more basic. The next three days are more basic. Why? Because we get a lot of people who are beginning FileMaker developers or they're just trying to use the platform and they're into this low code environment. They want to check it out. They have an issue. They're not quite sure how to solve it. So they uh, come to the live stream and we're always uh, soliciting ideas and, and uh, questions like, what would you like to see us address? Because if I get two or three or two or three people that ask for the same topic, that means a whole bunch of people have the issue, right? And uh, that's because only a fraction of the people actually let you know. So I've had this request three or four times in the last couple months. So we're definitely going to cover it today. And that today's topic is if you're kind of new in FileMaker and you're trying to import some data, a basic data import is one thing, but a little bit more elaborate data import can get tricky. And so we have to work this out in advance if, you're, uh, if you understand it. So real quick before we get going, I'm going to welcome everyone here in a second. But what I want to say is uh, this is a production of FMTrain.TV. I'm Richard Carlton. As I said before, if you come to our website, we are still updating the site. It's always kind of in a state of ongoing development. If you press the live training tab right here, you can see uh, the upcoming broadcast schedule. This is six days. These are six records. Those are six records out of our FileMaker system. We eat our own dog food. So whatever we build in the FileMaker platform, it's good enough that we use it ourselves and we're even willing to show it to you. Now, does it mean that FileMaker likes blue and teal and green and all these flavors of blue and green that are in here? No, that's our art guy decided he would have an art moment doing the, the different days like this. You could have it look any way you wanted. But these are six records that are live out of a FileMaker system. So we use FileMaker to manage our broadcast schedule amongst everything else. We actually have about a month of broadcast schedule booked out. When it displays this page, you're getting the next six records on the schedule. It's awesome, right? As a reminder, this is a free broadcast training event. Um, how do we keep the lights on? How do we pay the bills? We ask that you purchase our on-demand training. We have 90 hours of on-demand training specific to the FileMaker 19 platform. FileMaker 19 Pro, 19 Go, 19 WebDirect, 19 Server, 19 Cloud, the whole enchilada is all in here. If you want one of our older training courses on say 18 or 17 or 16, that all comes with our training bundle, so I recommend you go to fmtrain.tv up here. You come down to bundles right here, and you purchase one of these bundles. It's a one-year subscription. It's pretty cheap. And I know that a lot of people on the broad broadcast here uh, are very helpful in, in helping us uh, produce these, but also to purchase them because it helps put money in the piggy bank and allows me to pay for the people like the guy on the call. Jeremy, are you there? Jeremy, are you there? I am here. Hello. What do you do, Jeremy? What 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 do you do for the company? What do I do? So I am a video production and editor for uh, RCC. So I basically edit the live streams daily. Want to check out our free video player? You can download it free. This is the free video player. If you buy the bundle, you get the access code to turn the video player on and have it access everything, if that makes sense. So it's based in FileMaker. Once again, we're eating our own dog food. Pretty cool stuff. So today's conversation is about Excel. And so I had to go into Excel in here, and uh, I'm going to walk you through the conversation here uh, a little bit. So I have a couple different Excel files. I'm going to go ahead and pop these open. Um, and then if I have questions along the way, I'm going to be looking for questions. Jeremy, if you have questions, you want to just interrupt me, right? If you see questions from these sure. folks, right? Just, uh, just feel free to throw them out. So here is the scenario for today. Welcome to FileMaker Training 101. Here's what the question is. Dear Richard, or dear support, or whatever. Support at rcconsulting.com goes to our tech support team. If you address it to me, I'll see it. Dear Richard, a bunch of emails say this. I have to import Excel. Can you cover how to import Excel into FileMaker? But frequently what the person will say is, uh, I, have an X, I have a very complicated Excel document, and, um, and the issue is, is that I don't know how to import it because really the data doesn't all belong in one table. So this is a kind of a broader conversation about people use Excel. So, so, so in an ideal world, Excel files would be cute and snuggly like what you see right here on screen. 
You have first name, last name, state state. This is sample data that's generated. And we use this when we're doing testing on like starting point or something. And so what I could do is I could do an import, very basic import. You can, uh, I'm just going to cover the basics here. This is FM starting point life. For those of you who are wondering about this, if you go to fmstartingpoint.com and you do a download, there is basically a, a light version and a standard version. Both of them are free. But the light version, we chopped a bunch of unnecessary stuff out of so it's better for training, so I can focus on it for training. It doesn't have special Go layouts and special WebDirect layouts and special uh, QuickBooks layouts and all this kind of insane stuff. It's kind of really basic CRM. And so what I uh, already downloaded, it had a free copy here, so you just put your information there. You get a copy of the CRM, totally free. Uh, so I'm going to pop it open right now. And on the, uh, on the standard one, there's fancy charting and other stuff here. We just leave it blank, right? We, if, 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 so, if, <laughs> if I don't have anything important to say, we just leave it blank. We don't say anything. So what we have is a very simple file here. Here's context, very simple. I don't do, um, I, I don't do uh, in terms of master detail and all this advanced fancy, rah, 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 this is simple, right? Keeping it very, very simple for training. And so what I have is I have 17 records in here. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to delete all my records right now. Uh, so I have... There's none in here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say file, import over my face. Sorry about that. Uh, import records, file. And FileMaker is going to assume that I want to import into the contacts table because that's the table I'm on at the time we imp implement the uh, import. And I'm going to import this one right here. I'm going to say imports. I found a CSV or com uh, merge separated. There's about seven or eight different kinds of file formats you can suck into. These are them right here, more or less. Um, comma separated, uh, custom separated, merge fields, um, comma and tab separated are kind of some of the most common ones that you see. Uh, merge is another one. Excel files, right? So uh, I'm just going to say it's an Excel, uh, it's a CSV. It's, it's associated with Excel here. I don't know if you could see that. I could do a zoom on this a little bit. The people in Discord can't see the zoom. The people who are on uh, YouTube and Twitch uh, can see the zoom here. I zoomed in quite a bit. So this is, it's a CSV, but it's being associated with Excel on my computer. It's really not an Excel file per se. I'm going to say uh, import, open. And FileMaker is going to give us this new import dialog. Uh, I have not practiced this too much. I'm going to have to go a little bit slower to make sure I don't make a mistake. At the same time, it's better that I don't go really fast because this isn't for advanced developers. This is for basic people. I'm going to do a basic Excel import, and then I'm going to get, it'll get more hairy would be the loose word I would use. All right, so I'm going to say we want to import for almost everything we're doing as a beginning uh, or intermediate FileMaker developer. You're going to be adding records. You're not going to be doing update and replaces, okay? Just adding records, okay? And then what we have on the left side is the source information. I can flip through the records, and you can and you can see that you're, we're taking a look at the sample data over here. I can come over here and find the first one, and it has the names right here. Pretty, pretty neat right here. So you can see the name, first name, last name. Uh, you could line this stuff up. And I'm not going to – I mean, I, I guess I go through and do this so people can see this, but this is uh, should be um, – this one should be the uh, first, right, uh, name – uh, the first one is name first. So what you do is you don't drag and drop them anymore. It used to be in the old days, you grab it and you'd move it up and down. And after doing this for literally 29 years, Claire's changed it on me. Uh, I've been doing this job now 32 years and they changed it. Uh, so that's how long this dialogue was old. That's how old it was. So, uh, so then you look last name. So you're going to click over here. You do a quick search. I'm going to say name. It does a quick, it narrows down the pop-up list for us. I say name first. Then over here, I'm going to look over here. I'm going to say company. Do I have company? I don't. I think I have account. I think we call it account. So in starting point, we call it account name. That It's a CRM. It's semantics in CRM. A company, organization, account, you could call it the same thing. Um, then I have address, street, oh, primary address one lined up already by accident. That's pretty good. Primary city, that's pretty good. Co uh, uh, that's county. I don't. I think I'm going to leave this. I'm going to change it. I'm gonna, from import, I'm going to change it to don't import this field. So that's county. Then I want the state, postal code. I want the uh, state, 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 state. How come I'm not saying state? 
state state there we go primary state one okay then over here i have uh we could they call them postal codes generically because in the united states they call them zip codes but other places are postal code i'll just put the word code in here so i got postal code one there's address one address two uh there's a container i'm not going to import into a container if we had a picture now conveniently enough you really can't import pictures through merge and text fields because the picture's not in there if that would if you this would make sense to import a container if you're going filemaker file to filemaker file right makes sense then we got a fax. Uh, I, someone made fun of me the other day. They said, oh, Grandpa, you don't need a fax. And I said, thank you very much. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, so I don't even know if we even have a, uh, let me see, if I could type fax over here. Do we have fax? Oh, there is a fax. Okay, great. So the fax machine, then we have email, then we have web, web website. Okay, great. So now we've got it all lined up here. This is the basic import, okay? And I'm going to say, uh, there's some auto inner options here. I'm going to click on this and check a look uh, at these. Uh, perform auto inner options of any of the um, count during creation date, phone to, 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 to wait, wait, auto perform auto inner. So I'm not sure what the auto inner options would be for fax or count or any of these. I'm not sure. Is it is the fields because over here are the fields that have a tendency to auto enter, right? And so the ones that I really wanted to auto enter on would be the date create date modified date user uh, flag primary. I don't know what that's about. I'm going to leave that off. User created. I'm going to get rid of all these other uh, auto enter options. So time collected, time stamp. Like I said, I don't play with this a ton. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to. There we go. So these are all the things that should be automatically edited, like the date and time created, modified, things like that. Any objections do I have from the people there? Ken is saying something. Ken is typing. Any objections? No objections. All right, I'm going to say import. <clears throat> now, I'm going to give you a little bit of a, uh, a hint, a trick here. FileMaker will remember the last import we just did. Okay. Um, it gives us this little summary here. says it imported all this. That's great. And then if we go forward in the records here, then we have these people here, right? Pretty straightforward. Uh, first name was wrong line, I think. Match the last name. Did I mess that up? It doesn't really matter at this point. Um, what will normally happen, let me set expectations for you. What normally happens is things like this happen where you import and it's not right and you do it again and you do it again and you do it again and you do it again. And so what I want to recommend that you do is you go into script workspace and I'm just going to pop this over here real quick. I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to close all these. Uh, they're all closed. I'm going to, I'm going to create a new script called uh, restore import uh, one. Okay. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to do an import over here. And I'm going to have it save the current settings because if FileMaker crashes, it's going to lose the import order. And it's and, and, and this is a very simple import. You could have an import with hundreds that are long, hundreds. And if you, for some reason, crash FileMaker, which is not unheard of, or you get disconnected from the internet and whatever, it could forget the import order and you'd have to start all over. So the be it's better to kind of save it in a script a little bit. So import dialog on. Um, and so specify, I'm not going to specify the data source, but I'm going to specify the insert order. And so what I did is I specified here, and he's correct. I made an error right here, but I'm just going to say, uh, uh, actually, I could say OK and then save the script. And so now the import is saved. And so instead of going file import, right, which is what you do until you get your, I'm going to say this nicely, until you get your ass handed to you. Because this, if, we, if you keep doing it in here, it remembers the last setting, right? until you crash and then it forgets it. So it's better just to put in a script step and then just edit it in the script step, the one script step. Just my tip, you don't have to do it. It's for what it, whatever it is, is what it is. Um, I do need to identify the file though so it knows what to do. So I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna tell it to uh, dialog on the option here. I'm gonna specify the source, add file, just for the moment. I'm gonna do this file right here. I'm gonna say, okay. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, I'm going to let the default setting be there. And now I'm going to specify the import orders. We're basically back, hopefully, to where we were, right? So we've got, um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here for those of you. Um, so we're going to import uh, first name. Uh, let me see. First name. Uh, yeah, that's wrong. That should be last name. So name last. This, then company. Uh, is this all off by one? Did I lose my settings here? Is that what happened? Did I, I lose it? So this is why, <laughs> this is 
this is why you put it into a script, right? So uh, account. So once again, you get better at doing this. It's faster doing it uh, than you have uh, address, right? Uh, street one. It's not address. It's street one. I'm so stupid. And we got city, primary city, and then we have. Uh, we're not going to import this. So somehow I must have got off on this. I'm zoomed in a little bit on it now. I don't know that people can't see. I'm zoomed in. It's a little bit easier for me to see this now. I got state over here, right? Pretty basic, straightforward stuff. Once again, I'm going through it again. There, uh, this was the code. I'm going to do this again, uh, going through this. So now it's in a script step. So guess what? It gets saved, right? For sure. Web, website. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom back out. I'm going to say OK. Now we're, we're just saying it's all set. I'm going to save it. I hit my left hand, Command S, Command S, Command S. I saved it. A little asterisk is gone up here. Now it's saved. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to uh, go to records. I'm going to say delete found set, which is all of them. After a short moment, the file's running locally here. It won't take a second. So we have 5,000 records. We're going to start all over. Now this time, instead of going file import, I'm just going to run the script, right? It's going to bring this up. It shows dialog first, last. Looks good. We say import. So this is the basics of an import and a little trick on restoring it and saving the import for a future session. Um, this time it should be a little closer. But but getting it wrong and going back that is such a standard thing that happens. It happens to everyone. The goal is to not go back 100 times, right? So Jay McRae just said, if you don't need to put your data into a specific pre-designed table, you can target a new table and then you don't have to do all that matchy matchy stuff. Correct. That's a what correct Jay thing. That said. that's where you just that okay, so so what Jay McRae said real quick, I'm gonna point I'm gonna do this real quick. So if we have the Excel file the spreadsheet here, you can actually just take this and drag and drop it. So I'm gonna drag and drop it on top of Excel. Or no, I went on Excel, wrong way. I want to drag it on top of FileMaker. So my brain is going Mouth is going faster than my brain. There we go. And FileMaker says, oh, yes, would you like to import this? I'm going to use my special telepathy to build it for you, right? And you say, oh, that's really amazing, right? So then you can say, you know, use the uh, comma delimited and all this kind of stuff. And use the uh, somewhere there was an option here to use the first uh, import options. No, those are all the import options, right? So convert. Um, and it builds all this out. And somewhere along the line, you can use the first label as the name of the field. So you get this FileMaker file, okay? So would you rather use that FileMaker file or would you use uh, this FileMaker file right here, right? So that looks like this. So I, I think that um, pretty much, I don't know I've ever had anyone ever pay me to do something this basic ever in 30 years. So if you could get away with that, drag and drop, walk off, you're done, charge the person 500 bucks for your time, I guess. But for me, it's it, there's always a solution that's created. They want it to go somewhere specifically. In this case, it gets a little bit more exciting because we're going to get into a little bit more complicated Excel spreadsheet. So what I've done is I've created an Excel spreadsheet over here and I've zoomed in on a little bit. It's the same one, but this is what people do. And this is where I've covered the basics and everyone are, should already kind of know what I was doing. Um, this is what they do. They're like, they're using Excel, they're using Post-it notes, and then they make a sale. Oh, I'm going to make a sale. So they come over here and they, and they, and they, and they have a, uh, they have a purchase column. They say, this guy bought $1,819 worth of stuff, right? And this guy bought this and bought this and that, and that. The gal, guy, whatever, it doesn't matter. So these are the sales and they make notes in here, okay? And then they make another sale. <laughs> and then they make another sale. And before long, they have uh, a mess because they are putting everything in these lines. And if you know anything about FileMaker, you start thinking about, well, isn't that kind of an order or a sale or something? It's clearly not necessarily supposed to be in the contact record. Now, you could go into FM Starting Point over here and go into Contacts and... Uh, <laughs> You could define, uh, uh, you could delete all this stuff. I go to layout mode, you know, just take all this stuff. Oh, click on it. Can I click on it? There we go. Delete everything. Would you like to delete? Yeah, let's just delete everything. We delete everything. And then what we're going to do is we're going to define some fields in there. Order number one, order number two, order number three. And then as they make more sales, order number four, order number five, we just keep defining fields. Okay, that's how you did stuff in 1990, literally, right? 1990. When I started, flat file, that's what you did. 
But then you could start to structure things like, well, what if we have, have contacts in one table and invoices in another table, and then one contact can relate to an invoice. Now, we're not talking about data structuring today. Hopefully, most of you understand the con that it's such a basic concept. One person might order more than one item. And instead of defining a field every time they buy something, let's define a different invoice for them, right? And so what normally happens, a normal logical sequence, is a person realizes that they are screwed. They have a giant mess because this data all goes into contacts, but somehow this magically goes into, um, goes into an uh, invoice. Um, and so it, it, I'm going to cover a basic concept right here. We're going to go through it. But the, but the idea is, is that you realize that you have to import the data into more than one target, more than one destination. We have a source. It has to be imported in more than one place. So we did the import for the contact, okay? And so then if we do the import on the dollar amount, we have to make sure it's attached to the contact. Now, you could say, well, I'm going to use their first name and last name as, as the relationship key. If you don't understand relationship keys, I know this is going to confuse people. You need to go watch my training or find another live stream where we've covered this. But once again, this is why you go to... Uh, I've asked TK to post the, uh, post the link again. If you don't have our training, get the training because we cover this in great detail, but understanding the relational structure. So using first and last name is a bad name because there are, I have actually had in my company, and I have 30 some odd people that work here, I've had more than one Steve Allen that worked for me, and I've had more than one Nathan Allen. And I had, at one time, more than one of them had the same first, middle, and last name. So, And some people don't have a middle name, or they have eight middle names, and so that's kind of this squishy thing. So it gets this idea of, of a key. A key is an, a, a unique serial number for that person, right? And so uh, I don't want to get too advanced today into this, but what ended up happening is that in the sample file, um, there's a... Uh, what we need to do is we needed a, a primary key that we could associate with the import onto the contact. So the idea is that we could set the serial number. Now, for simplicity, if you're brand new to FileMaker, what I would suggest you do is don't worry about UUID. I, did, I mean, you could just close this off and pretend this doesn't exist over here, right? Ooh, that's kind of ugly. Why would does Excel normally do that? No, that is a graphical malfunction. Is that what that is? Ah, yeah, some sort of graphical malfunction. So a UUID is a random, uh, a random string, okay? It's, uh, I hate the idea of random because computers generally suck at doing random because they tend to repeat themselves. But this, this string is supposed to be secure. Like I'd have to make, run this like 13 billion times or something before I got a duplicate. So it's a pretty good number. So this becomes the primary key, the identifying key for this person over here, uh, McFan, right? So Porta McFan, right? That is their, her, his primary ID, okay? And so pseudo random, exactly, right? So, so the idea, uh, so the idea is that we need to, when we do the import, we need to put the primary key in there, and we need to use that primary key on subsequent imports to identify the person. Now. For simplicity of brand new FileMaker people, what I would suggest is that you go in here, you call it a serial number, for lack of a better word, and uh, if some of you watch all this shift, that is a reason why I just shifted, but you've got to be careful with that. What you're going to do is um, I would put a serial number right here, and then down here you're going to put a mathematical function. Um, I can't really zoom in on this part. I guess I could try a little bit here. I zoom in. So the formula you're going to want to use is this right here. Basically, you're going to reference the, the the number above it. So I'd reference this number above it, and then I'm going to add one to it. And so that is the ultra basic serial number. And then what you do is you do what we call a fill down. So if I select these items right here, and I go up under insert, view, insert format. Where's Phil? I, I need to zoom back out because I can't see what I'm looking for here. Okay. Oh, there it is, Phil. Very close to there it is, D. right there. It's under edit. Yeah, down. See that? So I was looking for under insert because it makes it that you would insert this, but there you go. So you're going to say edit, fill. I did this 12 times today practicing, and I can't remember it. I, uh, so you say fill down. So it takes a formula, and it replicates it down the page 5,000. If I could make 5,000 clicking noises, that's what it did. And so you could use this as the primary key. It's simpler for training applications for you to use the key like this. For those of you who know what a UUID is, we actually posted a link here on how to have 
Excel generate a UUID, right? So if I come over here, it was a PDF, uh, TK55678 saw this a little earlier. I posted it about an hour ago. These are instructions on how to generate a UUID. So this is the formula you copy and paste to generate the UUID. Make sense? And then you're going to save the whole thing out as a CSV file uh, and, uh, and basically lock it in like that. Because if you notice here, every time I click around, the UUID kind of tends to update, right? You know, it, it, you'll see them shift and change. And that's bad. You want these numbers to be set in concrete. And every time it reevaluates this function, it's randomly generating that number. So uh, you got to watch out for that. But if you want a tip, here's your hot tip on how to generate UUID in Excel. So uh, what I'm going to do now is, so now I have this. I'm going to save it. I'm going to close it. Uh, I want to go over here to the three CSV. I'm going to take a look at this file right here. Oh, I didn't save it there. I need to, uh, I'm going to do is I'm going to save that. I'm going to open my Excel file back up. I'm going to lose myself here briefly. I'm going to say file, save as, uh, columns.csv. So what it does, what the CSV does, it strips the uh, formula out of the Excel file, and you just get the actual final result numbers is what we're getting here. And then I'm going to say, comma, separated value CSV right there. Okay. And then I put the extension on here just because I'm kind of like that. I want to make sure it's all straight. I say save to the desktop replace the old one so now if I close this and I open this back up we're gonna have uh, the UUID is right here and we have this number right here and notice there's no formula in here see up here right here if you look the, the formula is not there anymore because we saved that as a CSV uh, it strips the formula because the formula is an Excel file specific item so it's it's basically we re recooked the Excel file so it's ready now okay perfect so what I'm going to do is we, now we have to do is we're going to do the same import all over again. So what I'm going to do is go back to my file maker. I'm going to say records, delete all the records, delete found set, um, delete all. I'm going to have zero here in a second. Yeah, there's a good, Kyle Williams says a good keyboard shortcut command plus R to fill down, and, or command D to fill down and command R. It's a very common, very common item. Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, there we go. So, we got an empty file. I could go to file and import again, right? But I want to do is I want to keep using that script that I've been working with, right? So, I'm going to say uh, script workspace. I'm going to, I have this script down here. Here it is right here. I'm just going to go ahead and tell it to run it, run the script. Um, and, um, or, actually, I don't want to tell it to run it. I want to go to script workspace. I want to edit the script. That would be better that way. Okay, so I'm going to say specify the import order, okay? Um, is, it, is it getting the same? Nope. Cancel. I want to adjust the target file. The target file is going to be uh, the new one with the CSV. This one right here with three sales. Okay, open. Okay, so that's our new target. That's great. I'm going to say import. I'm going to specify the import order. Now we have extra columns, right? So it kept the import order from the last one. See this? It all still matches. But then we've got purchase, another purchase, purchase, another purchase. And so we know that since we're importing into, at this point, since we're importing into contacts, we don't want the dollar amount to go into contacts. That goes into invoices, right? So we have to do at least two imports here to demonstrate this technique. This will be the import to import the contacts in. The important thing is that we have to bring over the serial number, the primary key that we're going to be using. And that is this item right here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say over here, ID uh, contact. I'm going to tell it to import the ID contact. In FM starting point, all our primary keys are ID underscore and a name. So it's ID invoice is a unique number for that invoice. Now, normally in, in, in starting point, as you or in the FileMaker solution, as you create new records, it'll auto create these. So we're going to address that issue here in just a second because I didn't address it in my original video in our training curriculum. And people are like, ah, watch out for this, right? So it's very important. I'm going to show you we're going to get in trouble. So I'm going to say, I've lined up this last field for those of you who want to see this. So from the previous import, this is the same. Then I have these three purchases here. I'm leaving those out because I know those are going to go to into an invoice, but we're importing into our target, which is contacts right now. And I have lined up the serial number I created with ID contact. If I was going to use the UUID, I would align the ID contact to the UUID instead. Make sense? 
Everyone's good with that. I'm going to say, I'm going to check the auto enter in here. It's going to auto enter, da, 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 da. date and time created, stuff like that. Um, and it's not going to auto enter the primary key, which is good. Okay, great. So I'm going to say, okay, import. Uh, all right, or basically it saved it. Uh, notice there's a little asterisk right here. It, it's it's this script has been edited. We changed the import order, so we have to go uh, command s or or you say up under here under save, right? You're gonna save the script wherever the save the script is. Say script command s right here. Uh, I just hit command s and hit that, and the little asterisk goes away, right? So little work uh, script workspace. Now I'm just gonna tell this script to perform. It's gonna pop it back up. That's fine. I'm just say import, and so here we go. So this is kind of the, uh, the critical thing to think about, is that we have to make sure that this ID number comes over here. And it would report any errors or any records that skipped. It didn't do that. The first one, it imported there. And in FM starting point, um, if I um, make this a little smaller, it's a little bit wide. I'll make it a little smaller, and then I can zoom. Can I zoom in on it? So there is the serial number right there. If I go to layout mode, it's ID contact. So we can see in here that we brought over the number two. So this is the unique ID. Now here's the interesting problem with this, is that if I create a, uh, it imported, for whatever reason, it imported, oh, it started at 1,000. Okay, and it ends at 6,000. Now, the, an uh, the last record was a blank, so I go ahead and delete the last record. So, but basically, it's gonna, if we create a new record, the database system doesn't look here to get its next number. It's not going to say, oh, the next one's 6,000. FileMaker keeps track of that itself in the field definitions as a general rule. You can change it to look at this number, but that's not normally how it does, is set up. It's going to use the standard definition we set up at the time. So if I go under File, Manage, Database, right? I go to Tables. I want to look at the Contacts table right here. And then I double-clicked it. And I'm going to say ID. I want to see the ID underscore. That's why we name things certain ways. We can find them. ID underscore contact. And here, uh, no, contact. There we go. It's an auto enter serial number. The next number, if I zoom in here, a lot of people can't see this. But if I zoom in here, it's CON000019. So it's basically number 19. Okay. Well, it's going to put CON. 0019 in here, so we, we should probably change this to something that would come after. It's up to you to figure out what your naming convention is in here. I didn't put, C CON tells us it's a contact record. As an advanced developer, you a lot of people use UUID, but for basic training, it's, it's important to understand if you're looking at a primary key, what that primary key is. So if we do invoices, it will say, it will say INV in a number or project PRJ or PRO or whatever it says um, and a number. That way when you're looking at the primary keys as a beginning, like Megan's looking at primary keys, she doesn't get totally blown away and get lost with that, right? Now I know she's learned all this stuff. She maybe is using UUIDs now, could be. But um, for training, I try to stay away from it because I'm trying to teach you about relational and importing and not about how to make the craziest uh, uh, primary key you can make, okay? And so in this case, if I, I'm just going to say cancel, I'm going to say OK. If I create the next record, it's not going to say 6,000. I'm going to say create new record. Bang. It's going to be this number. Uh, whoops. It's going to be this number right here. OK. And so if I go backwards, uh, there's a discontinuity in the sequence, right? Is that good? That's bad? It's up to you to decide. This is not what this conversation is about today. It's just that you need to make sure that these numbers never crash on top of each other. For safety's sake, what I would do is I would go file, manage, database. I'd go back to the ID contact. So what I would do is this record right here, I created it. I'm going to go ahead and delete it. So we have the next. Now if I create the next one, I set it to 6,000, right? And so if I say new record, the next one will be 6,000, but it has this other stuff in front of it. But that helps with the, with the confusion. So what we have done is we have done an import. And we have this primary key here. So now we go to invoices. And we don't have, a, I have 36 invoices. I'm going to go ahead and delete all these invoices out of here. Um, and so some of you are already thinking that I have a problem here, and you're right, I'm going to have a problem. Uh, what I'm going to do, because it gets into line items, it gets into more than what we really have time to do today, but it, if you understand what the concept of what I'm doing is, you'll be able to extend this into your own work. And that is that we need to do another import on this side, right, 
to bring in the bring in the other data. So what I could do is I go to script uh, script workspace, and then I'm going to move my camera a little bit, and then I'm going to say this is the import, but I want to. Uh, it's called import contacts, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to duplicate it. Command D with my little finger, duplicate it, and I'm going to name it import. Uh, I would say invoice number one. So if I say uh, import file specification the file, we're targeting the same file, which is totally great. Um, that's fine. What I want to do is adjust the import order. So now we're going after uh, the source. Now is am I? I'm on import. I'm on the uh, uh, import. I have to change it to change it to the table occurrence of invoices. And so, me remember before it defaulted to that because that's what I'd done. But remember, scripts the script doesn't really know the context. We're editing a script. The script doesn't know at the time you're going to run it what table it's at, so it doesn't really know how to lean in to help you. Whenever you target a source, you have to target the destination. It says source and target, source and destination. It's like an airline flight. When you go to uh, the airport, you see uh, your originating uh, departures and arrivals. So this is departure. This is arrivals over here. So the arrivals need to be an invoice. I believe that's under, if I go down here, da, 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 invoice line items. Where are invoices? Of course, I don't know where they're at, which is awesome. So what you have to do, literally, if you can't, oh, they're up here. Ah, because it's on the current, because uh, I'm on the current. Oh, it does understand I'm on the current table. Huh, interesting. So I'm on the current table of the layout, but understand the script can be executed under any context. The script is This script is not married to being in invoices. So important you understand that. Scripts can be fired under any context, and you have to be aware of that. What what happened right here, uh, oh, remember my camera? Come back. What happened up here is that it looked through to see what layout I was on over here, and it saw it was on. I saw it. I was on invoices, right? It makes sense. So pretty interesting. So uh, I'm on invoices now, and now I have to reline everything up. Here is the critical part that you want to target. You want to uh, come over here. You can put the name in and stuff like that. I think that's not important. Um, I'm just going to say. I wonder if there's a way to like set them all to not. Can you set them right click, set them all to not import? What I have is I have the serial number here. Remember, this is the number that we specified, right? 3,000, this kind of thing. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go ID, uh, in, uh, ID, not invoice. You think, oh, well, I could set the, no. You want it to be the ID contact. And that will cause, that will cause, interestingly enough, these re records to lock onto each other. So we did an import to contacts. Actually, I make myself a little bigger here. So I can wave my hands around a little bit more. So we're doing two or three or four imports. The Excel spreadsheet, we have the contacts. We have that one primary key, and it goes to contacts. And then we have that same ID for ID contact. We're going to send it to invoices because each invoice is related to a contact. So if we populate with the same number, then they cross-connect. Does that make sense? This is the critical thing, the one critical item, several critical items, but the takeaway from this one hour broadcast is that you have to go into your Excel file. You have to prepare it in advance before you just start importing. Okay, You need to prepare it in advance. You need a primary key in there. And then you have to figure out where this stuff is going to go. And one of my problems is, is that on the invoice, there's no such thing as just the dollar amount. Like you're saying, well, I could import <laughs> I could import the total into the bottom of the total on the invoice, except that's a calculation field, right? Um, you'd have to import it into a line item or something like that. So what I'm going to do is to help us a little bit, I'm going to cheat, right? Uh, nothing like cheating on a demo. So I have ID contact, and the other bit of data I need is this first one right here. So if you go back to the first one, this was their per first purchase. Because it's like anyone else. They make a sale. They're just happy to make a sale. They just call it purchase. They're not thinking about number two or three or four. So then the next one is another purchase. And then another one, I zoom in over here. And then it's the third purchase or fourth purchase or fifth purchase. So, um, And then suddenly, right about that time, they realize they're screwed because they're not using a real system. Excel is not a database. And Post-it notes are not a business solution, right? Um, unless that's all you can afford. If your entire IT budget is $1.99 or two US dollars, then yeah, Post-it notes are your entire budget. So maybe... We do a video on how to organize post-it notes, but um. <laughs> so I have a, I have a question from Wally mm -hmm. on over YouTube. He says, "How to fix this when you want to import from Excel and they put the initials and last name in one field, something like AJ Jansen." 
Yeah. Okay. So, so I, I'm, I'm going to address that real quick, Wally, right now. I would import it into a single field, right? And I'm going to define a field here in a second. You could de you could define an extra field, just a temporary holder, and then you would write our script to kind of fork it. So take the left word or the right word or something like that, uh, and separate it like that. You'd have to do do something like that because anytime people take like uh, city, state, zip, address, and they put it all in one field. Um, you have to come up with an algorithm or some sort of formula to separate it out. Now you can say, well, machine learning will figure that out. Okay, to a point, but people are uniquely kind of, um, I don't I don't want to say humans are fraught. I, I want to say you, people are frequent, su uh, stupid, but uh, fraught with error. How about we say humans are fraught with error? And so people putting this data in, what if they left everything blank? Um, I could give this to like a junior interny and give them 5,000 records to clean and over a week they get most of them done, but they'd still be, 100 of them would be wrong because uh, they had to make certain assumptions or guesses. But the idea is that I would bring it into one field and then parse it against that is what I would do. It's better to get it, see my expertise in FileMaker and so I'm more comfortable in parsing it in FileMaker. If you're an Excel ninja and you don't know FileMaker, then parse it in Excel first. But go with what you know, right? Most people either know Excel really great or they know FileMaker really great. If you suck at both, then I, whatever, then you'll have to pick, just do it in FileMaker because at least we can help you with that. But um, put it in a target field. So that's kind of what I'm going to do here a little bit along these lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I need a field to store the dollar amount because I really don't have a dollar amount field in the invoices that is really just like a number field. I just need like a temporary dollar amount field that I can play with. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna say, uh, oh, is it the bottom of this list? Uh, that's so much fun. So I scroll down here at the bottom of this list. So you click up here and you come down the bottom and you scroll. And then at the bottom, you'll say, you can create a new table or manage database. I'm gonna go into invoices right here. I'm just gonna create a new field. I'm gonna call it temp, uh, order amount, right? It's going to be a number field. I'm going to say create. I'm going to say OK. And then uh, what I can do is come back up here to this one right here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And I can say temp. And then there it is. So it locks that in. So that's my entire import right there, OK? And uh, I'm going to let it perform auto enter functions. It's fine. I have no problem with that. Because uh, what it'll do, it should, depending upon how this, this CRM set up, it may do a lookup out of the ID contact and bring over the people's information. We'll have to see what happens. So I'm going to make myself smaller again. Bring this back over here. I'm going to save this script. And I'm going to go ahead and run it and see what happens. It brings up this dialog. We say OK, import. And it's importing. And it's importing 5,000 records again, right? So does it bring over the data? Uh, yeah, it did. So here is the, so it brought over because the relational connection was established between the invoice and the contact, it brought over the person's contact information and their email, et cetera, whatever else that we wanted to get out of it. If we had a shipping address, um, let me see, is it a shipping address? What other addresses are on here? Kind of interesting. I'm going to zoom out one level here in FileMaker, see what I can get. There we go. All right, so ship to, uh, you know you know what it is? It doesn't know what to import from on that. Same as billing, right? So bill to or ship to. Um, the, the, the relationship doesn't connect that way. Now, you don't see the ID contact in here. But the ID contact is very much on the screen. So if I go in here and I say, show me, um, instead of the asset name, I'm just going to say ID, oop, ID contact. I'm going to double click this and change it to ID contact. That one right there. I go to browse mode. And so the first one's a uh, label record. So here you go. So there is your contact ID, right? Makes sense. And up here is your invoice primary key right here. So it auto auto populated that. Now the rub is, is you're like, well, it should have filled out my invoice for me. Well, what data did you have? All you had was a dollar amount. What do you expect? It's like tel telepathy, machine learning. It knows that I had bought, you know, 500 gallons of fuel uh, for a race car. And it's, that's how much it is. So what, what we have is we have that extra field that we defined, 
right, in this case. I'm going to drag that down here in a second. I'm going to call it temporary, um, temporary order amount. And uh, this is it right here. Browse. And so this is the dollar amount that came across. That makes sense? So these are... This, so you know that this person bought this for this dollar amount. If I go back over here to contacts, um, <laughs> of course, I deleted that part out of it, the, the related uh, part of it. I was going to undo that, but uh, <laughs> I, bought, I butchered that. But the, but the related data is all here. You can see it if you, if you go across. Um, the bottom line, though, is that if you go to invoice, I, I remember the portal here. I was making a demo, and then I got distracted by Jeremy. Yeah, you get out of hand, you make assumptions. But you're on an invoice, um, and so now you know that's $363, but that Excel spreadsheet, that's all it had. So you'd have to figure out how you're going to reconcile your old historic data. This comes in every FileMaker developer. We go and help a customer in a couple of business. They have how they want to handle it going forward, and then they how they handled it previously historically, and those are frequently different things. Right? And so maybe this is all you would have. You'd know that the order, you could come up with a way of just posting like, um, you could add like, a, I would say historic, you could script this, historic order, right? And you'd put an ID in it and you don't even know what it is, uh, you know, un, unknown product. You're like, well, I don't like that. Well, then next time you shouldn't use Excel on a single number. You say unit cost, quantity one unit cost is 363. And so then at the end of the day, you actually do have, if I come over here, um, you should have a total, right? So you have the uh, subtotal, total, total, amount due. I'm not sure why it's a question mark there. I'd have to look at that. But you get the idea, unit price. Oh, unit cost, sorry. 360. I put that in the wrong spot. You don't even know what the cost is. There you go. So so at least this way, you could write a script that could take that and then feed this in there. In fact, you could do another import into line items. Poss well, no. You'd want to script it from this side, right? And so that's how you start to build a multi-table import. I know it's been an hour here, and I haven't taken a lot of questions. <laughs> the image from Scott is in regards to Wally's question. Um, as far as the all of the things in the one field, he said you can fix that in Excel, Excel before you export it. Right. Well, if you know how to do that, right? So right. If, once yeah. again, this gets back. This is the same question as people say, should I have a FileMaker? Should I use FileMaker Cloud? Or should I use FileMaker Server Mac? Or should I use FileMaker Server Windows? Or if I use FileMaker Server Linux? So there's like uh, at least four options there. And I would say use the one that your IT team is prepared to support, right? And so if your IT team knows Macs, then you use a Mac. If it's, they know Linux, they love Linux, use Linux. If you know Excel, do an Excel. If you don't know Excel and you know FileMaker, do it there, right? You can solve typically almost every problem in the world. You can solve more than one way, right? And the trick is to pick the best way of doing that. So, um, so I know it's been kind of boring, uh, not very exciting, but this is really basic stuff, and it's important that the basic people kind of learn this idea. So I did one order and then another order and a third order, and so strictly speaking, for me to complete this task correctly, I would have to go back into my script workspace. I would want to edit this again, and what I would do is this temp order amount, I would have to uh, put it down Oh, I did it. Oh, I didn't even line it up correctly. See, that's the problem. You got to be careful when you're doing stuff. I thought I was lined up in the first. I did the second one, right? Doesn't really matter, um, but I did it right there. So I'd want to go back here and do the temp. If I put the temp order amount back in here, it will move it up. It'll move it up for us. Once again, you can't drag and drop it up. So now we're realigned. I could save it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say OK. I'm going to save it. I'm going to run it. Um, like that, and uh, off it goes. So it imports the second one. So you do this. You do, so for this import to work correctly, you do one import to contacts with the serial with the primary key for the contact. Then you do three imports into invoices separately, three separate passes on it. So we just did pass one. This is pass two. We just did, um, and then you do it one more time. Actually, you'd actually go back and you'd run that script, stay up one more time, and I'm just going to run it manually here and then adjust it right here. So I'm going to come down to the third purchase. I'm going to say temp 
right? And once again, the key thing here is the ID contact. That is what connects it to the contact, which allows you to bring the data over and you can play with the addresses and all sorts of stuff like that. But that gets it into what we would consider a correct relational uh, structure, right? And that way you can scale. Now you're not limited to one and two and three purchases. It's FileMaker. You can have unlimited numbers of purchases for people. You're not limited by defining extra uh, fields or columns in the Excel spreadsheet. So I'm going to say import and it spins. And so now we have done so basically, if you had 5,000 people and they each had one order or three orders, we should have about 15,000 records in the system. And we do 15,004 because there's a extra blank, a couple extra blank ones in there. So if you look up there at the top, we did three passes each for about 5,000 records. There you go. At any rate, that's it for today. Appreciate it. Send your emails to support at rcconsulting.com, and we'll catch you tomorrow. the quarterback great read good patience more importantly great job up front protecting this quarterback to give you a chance and that's all you can ask for trying to rally down 10 9 25 to go here in the fourth short motion by amandola from the left Katie takes the shot to step stands in throws it left for amandola reaches up and snaps a high throw and lands inside the 10 Ooh. rolling to the nine ball slightly behind him again he makes the ground